uh, when I was preparing for uh, when I was preparing for uh, for this event, I was thinking about many icebreakers that uh, you see in many of the presentations that are available in YouTube or somewhere else. I was thinking maybe about saying some uh, some words in Croatian, but at the end of the day, I realized that a misspelling might be worse than uh, than a presentation. So I prefer at the end of the of my slides that uh, that you will keep only the sick fox story with you, and uh, you will be able also to to tell to everybody you know about what you've seen in uh, in this event. So once again, I'm Silvio. I'm a sick fox corp employee. Okay, no worries. Uh, Bill Gates have uh, had uh, bigger issues win with Windows 98 than me, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm working at uh, I'm working at Sigfox. We are part we are partners with IoT at Adria, the Sigfox operator from Croatia. I have more than 13 years experience in uh, the telecom industry, so it's a uh, it's le let's say a smooth uh, pass from uh, from Tomislav uh, to my presentation. And for the last five years, I was involved uh, heavily in the IoT domain. I love it. I, uh, I think it's the most interesting part of any business. Of course, it's a personal opinion. And in my next slides, you will see how the Sigfox connectivity and the whole Sigfox ecosystem is trying to change the world. Uh, you, will, uh, you will see that uh, we have also many active solutions. We have the network present in many countries, and we have a whole ecosystem full of, uh, full of solutions. And uh, uh, going back to, to the Gardner presentation from earlier, I want to take, uh, to, take a step, uh, to take a step back to the digital transformation and what it meant uh, more than 20 years ago. So we had uh, in 95 an estimation of, uh, of internet users. We had then in 2005 an estimation of smartphone users. And now, last but not least, we have an, uh, an estimation of objects that will be connected. When we look at the figures, and as I was uh, replying to the question earlier, I think that the figures from the things that will be connected are more accurate than they were 20 years ago, because we see a huge potential in IoT, and we expect in the coming years that all the objects will have a connect an IoT connectivity embedded in them. No matter what, if it's Sigfox, LoRaWAN, NBRT, LTM, 5G, 6G, or whatever G will come up. And because, uh, Sometimes words uh, words are not uh, are not enough, and uh, because I really appreciate the work that my communication department has done, I prefer to show you a story about the Sigfox connectivity in a short one-minute video, so you can have a full picture, and then I will deep dive into some uh, some specific details about us. Okay, that's about Sigfox in a one-minute video. I hope you, in, you liked it as much as I did. Of course, being a Sigfox employee, I need to like it, but <laughs> I hope you did also. But now, you might think about what is different at us, because you see many presentations from everyone. The telecom operators are presenting you M2M, IoT, uh, NB-IoT, LTEM, 5G. Uh, Sigfox is presenting its own technology, LoRa is presenting their own alliance and their own ecosystem. Okay, but what is different in us? The difference is coming from, first, the equal access, 
and equal access is uh, divided into, into two important topics for us. The first one is the relationship between us and each Sigfox operator that is operating in all the countries because we want everyone to have the same terms and conditions everywhere, no matter what, what country they are representing. And also from customers' perspective, we want the customers to have the same pricing approach worldwide. That doesn't mean that they will have the same pricing everywhere besides the global deals, but in terms of, of structure, the pricing structure in Sigfox is a very simple one, three packages, a pricing grid, and each country is setting up their own prices. For us, it's very important that the customer has the fair price in all the solutions. So if you have a certain deal with a certain amount of devices, then you will have a very transparent price. If you increase the number of devices, then you might have some discounts depending on, uh, on the volumes that you achieve. That's very important for us because we don't never want to end up in a situation where a customer with 100 devices has a much better price than a one with one million devices. So for us, that's why equal access is very, very important, and you will see it in all the slides, both from Sigfox Corp and from Sigfox operators. Also from total cost of ownership perspective, we believe that our solution is delivering the lowest TCO. And that's not only words, though that's, that is a real fact, because the Sigfox technology was from 2010 available. We've started working on the ecosystem. We've developed the relationship with module manufacturers, with device manufacturers, with platform providers. And at this moment, we are able to say, based on the references that we have and the ones that you will see in the last slide, we are able to, de to deploy a solution with the lowest TCO. Also, because we are talking about a low power wide area network, yes, we are, we are a low power connectivity provider, and that is mainly because our devices are in a deep sleep mode. That's why we managed to achieve an autonomy of some of the devices, let's say in utilities of more than 10 years, and in specific use cases, we can go even to 15 years of autonomy with warm one meter reading per day. And to, to give you a, let's say, a more concrete example, if we look at asset tracking, because we know that fleet management is the most important vertical for any telecom operator, in asset tracking, we managed to achieve a battery autonomy of minimum three years with our solutions. Of course, this, this depends on uh, the, the way the customer wants the data to, to come to his application and everything. But overall, we are a low power connectivity provider. We are also a global network, because I was saying about Sigfox, about IoT Net Adria, and all the other countries where we are present. But that's very important for us. We are building one global network, so no matter where a device is traveling, and there is a Sigfox coverage there, it's working. So basically no roaming, no roaming boundaries, no different pricing depending on the country, and long story short, no headache for a customer. That's why, that's why we've, we've started in 2010 developing the Sigfox network. We are now present in many countries and more will come in the, in the coming years. And because we were talking earlier about GDPR and security, this is a real, real value added for the Sigfox connectivity. Our connectivity is an anti-jamming one. So our, our, div uh, our solution cannot be jammed. Of course, now we are talking about a standard jammer that you can find on any website, don't want to name them, a jammer that will be used by any thief, let's say, that, that wants to break into a house. If there are certain authorities that want to jam something, I think we can all agree that they can do it without asking us, so uh, no worries about that. But in terms of commercial approach, our technology is an anti-jamming one. And that's, uh, that's why, because I don't want to only to say some words, that's why uh, it's like that, because our devices are mastering the network. So it's a completely different approach than what you were used until today. So it, imagine, imagine on, um, in education, imagine an old school 20 years ago where each student that wanted to say something needed to raise his arm. If the teacher wanted to hear him, he would say, okay, you are allowed to speak, please speak. In the, in the Sigfox ecosystem, the student is, the m is in the middle of the classroom and he speaks and he's getting listened. This is the way the network, the Sigfox network is working. Our devices are waking up, are sending information into the, into the Sigfox ecosystem, and all the base stations that are surrounding that device are capturing the message. 
So that's why we believe that our technology is a real anti-jamming solution because in order to jam a Sigfox solution, you need to jam all the base stations that are surrounding the device. And seeing some examples, you might get the information from a base station that is more than 100 kilometers away from your device. So for sure, nobody will be able to jam all the base stations close to the device that he's targeting. And that is very, very important, and you will see in all our presentation because it's a huge differentiator for us. Then we, we are looking at the whole ecosystem. Of course, we are an IoT player in this ecosystem, and our main message is that in IoT, there is room for everyone. There is no standard solution that fits all. That's why I said in the beginning that our solution is not the best for all the use cases. You will never hear from Sigfox something like that. We are good at certain use cases, and very, very important, the customer is interested in the data that he needs, so that's why the use case is dictating the technology and not the other way around. I want to, in a very transparent and honest way, to congratulate the Croatian Telecom for uh, deploying the NBIT solution. It's, a, it's an amazing achievement, achievement for them. It's an amazing achievement for all the telecom operators that are deploying mobile IoT solutions because, as you will see in, my, in this slide, there is room for all the technologies depending on the use case. So NBRT is very good for many, for many use cases. LTEM is very good for many use cases. The classical LTE that we are using in smartphones, surveillance solutions, is very good for many use cases. And also there is Sigfox out there, which is covering all the solutions that didn't, ha that didn't have a connectivity method so far. The devices that, cou that couldn't get a power source there, they need a, a, uh, a solution with a huge autonomy and they are sending very, uh, very small messages with the right information that is needed for the customers. So uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but everybody needs to be aware that IoT is such a big story that everybody has a room in inside it, and it's our responsibility, both us and the telecom operators and all the players in the IoT industry, to educate the market and to make everybody aware that IoT is there for the last 10 years and it will still be there no matter what the technology, no matter what 5G, 6G, 7G will come up, IoT is there. But at the end of the day, it's very important for the customer to get the data at the lowest price possible with the biggest autonomy that, uh, that he can get from his device and in the most efficient way. I said that there is room for everyone in this IoT market. I really believe this and also I, I'm, lo I'm looking at this complementarity solution because Sigfox can be a, a complementary connectivity method for many use cases like smartphones, security, asset management, white goods, home automation, geolocation using Wi-Fi, backup connectivity and set of box. And to give you some examples, because you might think, okay, I have a SIM card inside a smartphone. Why would I need a Sigfox connectivity embedded in it? Imagine, what Im imagine how your life would look like in the coming years if somebody is stealing your phone. Usually they, they, uh, they turn it off, they throw away the SIM card from it. Imagine what will, uh, what will happen if you have a Sigfox device out there that is able to deliver you a one-week autonomy only to be able to track your device you will be able to find it very, very fast and, not, and um, you will not have the, uh, the feeling that, you, that you, were, uh, you were stolen. Because let's face it, the, the mobile phone today is part of our lives. We have it always with us. We are using it maybe too much sometimes, but it's something that is very personal. And with a Sigfox connectivity embedded in it, we might have, uh, we might have a solution. Also, if we are looking at security, our biggest customer today is a security company that has deployed millions of devices with Sigfox connectivity embedded. And, that's, and that happened because they realized that if you put one SIM card in your, home, uh, in your home alarm and you put the backup SIM card only to be able to switch if something goes wrong, if somebody comes and jams the solution, guess what? With the GSM jammer, it, it jams both the connectivities no matter what the operator and they've added the Sigfox connectivity 
inside their new modules, or they have upgraded with a firmware update the existing central alarms, and they've managed to use GSM as a main connectivity, which is very good, it's amazing in home alarm, plus a Sigfox connectivity whenever something goes wrong. And that uh, allowed them to have a huge differentiator on their market with a very low cost solution, but with huge benefits for, uh, for the end user. Imagine what happens today when they go to a customer and they don't fight in prices, they fight, they fight only on the solution, and that's it. I was talking earlier about our presence, and I want to show you some, uh, some key figures about the Sigfox ecosystem, because it's very important for everyone to understand that we are already here, we've been here for a certain number of years, we've just, uh, we've just been here in Croatia for almost one year, so Sigfox is present worldwide. We are present in 50 countries, so today officially there are 50 Sigfox operators. 17 of them have national coverage, but more than 10 out of those 50 are pretty close to national coverage. We have a huge ecosystem today, so we are talking about more than 500 devices and more than 600 IoT companies plus almost another 500 devices that, is under that are under certification. And regarding certification, that's also a very important part. Comparing to other technologies in Sigfox, there is room only for certified devices, because we want to allow the customer to have the best experience with the Sigfox connectivity. So whenever you or your customers or your colleagues want to deploy a Sigfox device, you need to, you need to build it with our recommendations, of course, nothing is mandatory, but it's up to you to, to build a device in the most efficient way for our technology. Then you go to a certification process, and after that, you are allowed to do traffic in the Sigfox network. That's because we want to, once again, to offer to everyone the same customer experience, and all the devices need to work in the most efficient way in order to achieve those more than 10 years of autonomy. And if we deep dive a little bit into the devices part, we already have se more than 70 trackers, more than 50 devices for metering, and as we've seen in the earlier presentations, utilities is one of the most important verticals, and we have more than 50 devices in water metering, gas metering, electricity metering, and heat metering. So solutions for the most important use cases. Also, also buttons. I think everybody knows about the Amazon button that is very famous today worldwide. We have with Sigfox connectivity more than 30 buttons available today that can be set up and get different functions for your, for your customers. More than 80 sensors, environment sensors, uh, smart building sensors, smart office sensors, more, more than 80 sensors that, sensor that you can use. And last but not least, because these are devices, devices that you can purchase today. We have more than 30 modules available today with Sigfox connectivity, modules that are starting from as low as $2 and the price keeps decreasing monthly, and more than 80 platform providers. That is very important because at the end of the day, it's important what you have already available and not what's written in a slide. It's very important for you to have access to a huge ecosystem you can interact with IoT at Adria and you will see in Bruno's presentations some concrete information about some concrete information about the use cases that are already available in Croatia. And also we have a stand out there where you can test where you can test the Sigfox devices. So it's a live test. Everything is transparent, device on the table, mobile application, we can show you temperature, humidity, door sensor, motion, everything you want in a device, you can have it outside in our stand. That's why I'm always saying that the information that's coming from Sigfox is coming in a very transparent way, and that's something that you can put your finger on from now. So everything is available already. And of course, many other, many other solutions in all the verticals. We deliver all the information publicly on our partner's website, so that's why you see more than 500 devices out there. And of course, no presentation about IoT couldn't have one technical slide, so of course I've added ours. I just want you to see a picture about the way the Sigfox network is working. I hope it's not a very technical one, but it's very important that with a low payload of maximum, of maximum 12 bytes, 
which believe me, it covers all the use cases that you need with Sigfox, of course. Almo almost 100 and for more than one, uh, more than 100 messages per day. So how it's working? The device is sending the message. The message is captured once again by all the base stations that are surrounding it. So we are able to achieve a huge SLA. My colleagues don't allow me to say that it's close to 100%, but I will do it anyway because I'm the only Sigfox employee around here. Very important, all the information from all the base stations is going to the Sigfox cloud, and it's first in, it's, the, it's the, a very important rule. The Sigfox cloud is identifying the first message, and if everything is okay, it deletes, it, it deletes all the other ones that came from the other base stations, and he sends the message to two places, depending on the customer needs. We can either send it to a platform and we are working with all the major platform providers like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, IBM Watson, PTC ThingWorks, and many others, or directly to the customer application. And the integration, even though I'm not a technical guy, but I heard technical guys talking about it, the integration is very, very simple. You can have your messages directly from the Sigfox Cloud into your application in a very easy way. For a software developer, it's nothing. For me, it's complicated, but for a software developer, it's almost nothing. And to show you that all the information that's coming for me is real, here are some of the references that we are allowed to share publicly. Unfortunately for us, there are many others that have strong NDAs and we, we, cannot, we cannot say anything about them. But it's very important for you to see important players from all the industries worldwide and I will stop a little. I will stop a little bit at the utilities market because Comstrup is one of the one of the players that are that have Sigfox connectivity embedded in their water meters, and they are able to deliver the same autonomy with Sigfox like with wireless Embus. Veolia is a customer that is using many solutions, not not uh, the ones in utilities necessarily. We are very very powerful in asset tracking. And we've managed to, uh, to sign some impressive deals with Michelin, Airbus, Tracker, Total. Those are very important deals with, with hundreds of thousands of devices that will be deployed in the coming months. And all the other, all the other verticals where we believe that we are very, we are very good at. So don't, uh, don't hesitate to contact us regarding, uh, regarding devices, solutions, references, because they are already out there. You, see, you can simply go, buy a device, install it, and it's working. No need for additional developments, only if you want something custom. And I will stop my presentation with a very important stuff. Everything is about data. So no, no matter what, what connectivity you have, no matter what application, at the end of the day, Everything is about the data that you can get and the data that is able to, to change the way you are looking at IoT. And I really hope that everybody from now on when they will talk about IoT, they will forget about connectivity, they will forget about technical details and they will simply focus on the data because that's the most important part. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>